Welcome back to the Better Men, Better Ball Player Podcast. I'm your host, Trey Cobb. I want to thank you for joining us here on our 90th episode of the podcast. Number 90. And today we get a chance to talk to, in our 90th episode, special one with newest Hall of Fame member of the 2021 class in the National High School Baseball Coach Association, Coach Ray Evans. Coach Evans is a Southern Florida legend. Um, he had recently re- finished his career at Dr. Phillips, which is in the Orlando area, but he started his career at Miami Beach, and as he restarted, revamped the program, bringing their first ditcher title since the 70s, which was about 20 years later when they did it, Visit Dr. Crop started a brand new program, wins three out of four district titles, and then he goes on the Flanagan. Most people realize know his history at Flanagan High School, where he was three times state champion in five, six in 2010, 12 district titles, 12 region final appearances in 2010. The 2010 team was also the national championship program. Then he goes on to finish winning back-to-back district titles at Dr. Phillips as he finished his career with 559 wins, 251 losses, and two ties for his career. Coach Evans, uh, like I said, the 2021 class at the Hall of Fame for the National High School Baseball Coach Association just recently inducted their inductees the first weekend in Arizona. So again, congratulations, Coach Evans. Currently, he's also working as an assistant with Windermere High School, and also he does work with the Power Baseball Travel Organization as well. And stuff that we talk about during the conversation, and uh, just his adaptability, his passion for the game, talks about how at each one of his stops, what each of the different situations were, what he needed to get into certain situations were, meaning what he needed from the job, what he needed from the area. And I think it's important for people to know like all the different things that you need in order to have a good situation to be successful. You hear a ton about how he adapts. He's adaptable. And how it's not about him. It's funny how the good ones, the, the legends, that's what they say. It's not about them. It's about so many people around that got to be them to make it happen. So it's like it's not about me. Uh, it's, I, it just need to, it's it's about us. It's about the game, what we can do to bring this great game to life and help make it even better. Just like our guys at Netting Pros are making programs one facility, improving what programs one facility at a time. Netting professionals specialize in design, fabrication, installation of custom netting for backstops, batting cages, dugouts, scoreboards, BP screens, and ball carts. They also design and install digital graphic wall padding, windscreen turf, turf protectors, dugout benches, dugout cubbies, and more. Netting professionals continue to provide quality products and services to many recreation, high school, and college fields, facilities, and stadiums throughout the country. Contact Wellmeyer. Contact the guys at Netting Pros at 844-620-2707 or info at nettingpros.com. Visit them online at www.nettingpros.com or check out Netting Pros on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn for all the latest products and projects. Thanks to those guys. Thanks to Netting Chat family. They'll be a part of it. Uh, man, this and the, like this conversation was tremendous. Um, Got to give a shout-out to Pudge uh, for connecting us. Pudge Gorman, if you haven't checked out his episode, it was awesome. Talked a ton. Uh, he put me on. I mean, Coach Evans are good friends. They're going into the Hall of Fame together for this 2021 class. So congratulations to Pudge and Coach Evans again and all the other inductees. So without further ado, this is a great one. Uh, I've had a lot of fun, and uh, we talked for a long time. Here he is, Hall of Fame coach Ray Evans. Uh, well, we had the national. We had three state titles and a national championship um, in 2010 at, at Flanagan. 
Um, heck, you know, you remember more, honestly, you remember more of the losses than the wins. Cause I really think we should have probably won about maybe, probably three, at least three, if not four more state titles at Flanagan. Yeah. You know, we went back to back. We could have gone back to back again in 11. We should have won in 14 and 15. We lost to the two state champions, right? That they beat us one, nothing and five, three, and they went on to win the state. So um, you, you remember that more than anything else other yeah. than that. No, it was a great time. I mean, building, uh, I, I did, I, uh, at Miami beach, you know, um, they, they weren't very good when I took over and I took over and I didn't think I was, I would be still doing this or, or, or have a career in this. I mean, I was just fresh out of uh, playing in Italy, come back. I thought maybe I, you know, I did my internship with Paul Maneri and I thought, you know, I might follow him around and see if I could go maybe coach with him. Cause, and, and if, I think if I would have, everything would have changed probably when I had my wife, my family or any of this, um, but maybe traveled and being an intern with him or an assistant at air force and just go with where he did. And I did, and I started a high school and, and then ended up having been thrown into the fire and taking over the job. And um, they didn't win since like in the 70s when Skip Bertman, famous Skip Bertman, was the last coach that had won there in the 70s. And then here I am taking over in like 89, 90. And I think uh, the, the first time we won um, probably was like a uh, almost 20 years later in 95, I guess, or 96, 97, somewhere around there where we won the first district title. And then started, you know, uh, with, we had a magnet and that was where like, before it was ever really known how to get kids into a school the right way. That's when it started. And I started having kids come in from magnets from different places. They were like second tier to other schools come in and then be the first tier at our place. And we ended up started winning and, and, and build a program there where, uh, my assistant Lou Sanchez took over, which is now a Braves, um, the Brave scout. And, um, you know, took off from there and just ended up going to Dr. Crop, opening a new school. Thought that would be cool because the AD was a baseball guy and he was a friend of mine and wanted me to open it. And then from there to Flanagan, 15 years, and then up here, at finishing up a career. And who would have known I would be doing this all this? I I I, I never would imagine I would have been doing this all this time. Honestly, Trey. Yeah. It, it it has flown. I mean, it's slowed down now, but it is is it's flown. You know, my, my kids, my wife, 30 years later, she went into it. it. It's just, it's amazing. It's, it's truly amazing. So you have it in front of you. You can ask me anything about it. I'll go off on it. You can stop me when you need to. So. Yeah, I thought that was great. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> so you started the program at Dr. Crop. Uh, at Dr. Crop. Yeah. After I left Miami beach, Ron Rodriguez was the Miami high baseball coach. And I, I used to run a pretty good, um, uh, early bird tournament. I had um, Pepe Ortega. I don't know sure if you're familiar with Pepe Ortega is a big, no, well-known White Sox scout. And he used to help me or tell me what teams I should have in the tournament. And he would bring in a buttload of scouts and bring in a lot of talent. It would make a good gate, a lot of concessions. And um, um, Ron Rodriguez at Miami High was one of those teams. And because he always had a lot of really good players, little good, really good Latin players. You know, they could always had arms guys that were, you know, back then high eighties, low nineties was a big thing. And not now, I mean, you got to be mid nineties or upper nineties, but yeah. um, would bring those guys in and, and um, uh, Ron ended up, you know, moving on uh, and, and wanting to uh, be the AD of the school. They chose him. And the first thing he did was he started to get picking the coaches out. And I happened to be the baseball coach he picked out and, and I was like, yeah, man, it's closer to my place. I'll, I've never opened a school. I didn't even know I'd still be doing this. And I went and opened it and was there for uh, five years. So, you know, that was my second stint. And that was like fit that made 15 years down in Dade County before I jumped into Flanagan for uh, the next 15 years in hmm. Broward County. What did you learn about like starting a program brand new versus taking one over that was already kind of started well it was funny because it was sort of similar because at miami beach um i had a i had to restart a program and revamp it and at the the difference was um i i started it and it was my brand that's it this is how it is it's not like i have to change anything the first year or two this is how it is um you know, you got brand new equipment. You had to, you had to, you had to help with the field and just tell them how you needed things and what you wanted. And you really don't get anything you really want or need 
um, unless you're involved. And even when you're involved, you don't get what you want or need all the time. You had to sit there and start with a butcher club program. You had to start, uh, you know, build the build. You had to build everything from scratch, everything. And even when you did that, there was a lot of problems, a lot of things that went wrong. Um, and you just had to deal with it. You know, it, it was, it was, everything was new and there was always going to be things that you didn't get and you're waiting for and you're waiting for. And, but, um, it was a, it was, it was a really good, uh, thing that I had to go through. I had to go through that to make me the coach that I ended up being to this day. You know, I, 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 I had to get my own, um, you know, I ended up getting assistance, inherited assistance. And then I got different assistance over the 10 year span at Miami beach and, and upgraded, but at this place, I, I was able to go ahead and go out and sort of pick and choose. And, um, and then the, and where it was located wasn't the best location for baseball talent, but we were able to do really well very quickly. But we were only going to go so far because uh, after, after a, a couple of years, um, you know, we were, winning the, we were winning the district titles. But the next round, the next level was the regional play. And we couldn't really get over the regional play because of the talent that we had. Great kids, hard work ethic, but we would always go into, um, you know, Hialeah, you know, and Hialeah is r really Latin. And we had, you know, a lot of Anglos and, and not a lot of Latins in our area. And, you know, we would, we would lose on a regular basis in the second round. And it was five years. The first year was nothing but JV, but after that, we were pretty successful. I think we won three out of the four district titles and we would lose in the regional round in either the quarterfinal or the semifinal. And that was as far as they were ever going to go. And uh, the next step was, you know, um, Flanagan uh, had a, had an athletic director that had worked with me at Miami beach. Um, he was um, a girls basketball coach that was going into administration and always told me, he's like, man, I always respect what you're doing, what you've done. And if I ever have the opportunity uh, at the, as an admin to have you as my coach, I want to, I, I'm going to come after you. And I, I took it as a, a compliment and nothing more, nothing less. And mm -hmm. the next thing you know, he's at Flanagan and he calls me one day. And, and it, it was funny because the day he called me was the day after we lost in a regional in a regional quarterfinal game and if we had won the next round was going to be against Flanagan yeah. and they lost their quarterfinal so we had both lost on the same day in the very next day when I'm still like licking my wounds and going just another year not getting where I think you know I want to be he's like how you doing what are you doing what are your thoughts about you know, moving, taking it, making a change. And I'm like, well, he says, remember what I told you? I said, yeah. I said, well, where are you? What are you doing? He says, well, I'm over at Flanagan. I said, well, you guys have a coach. I said, we were supposed to see you. If you would have won, we would have won. We would have matched up. He says, yeah, <laughs> we're making a change. And what okay. do you think about coming over here? And I said, well, when do you want to meet? And, um, you know, we, uh, ended up meeting up probably the next day or two. I wanted to go over there. I brought a coach with me. We went and surveyed the, the facility, <laughs> sort of jumped the fence. <laughs> and walked <laughs> in the facility. What was I going to get into? And then we started <laughs> drawing up what we wanted to do and change. Wow. Cause it sort of looked like a rec facility with all kinds of things that would have made it really nice which eventually we did. And, um, and then I sat down and I made like a, a bulletproof checklist on things that I really would want and need for us to be successful. And when I met up with him, it was funny because it was him. It was an athletic director. It was um, the booster club president and then the financial guy behind the scenes, so okay. to speak. And we met up right down the road at a restaurant uh, from Flanagan. And uh, when we started to talk, they asked, hey, you want a beer? And I'm like, no, you know what? Maybe afterwards, maybe no time. I, I, yes, I drink. Don't think I don't drink, but we're going to talk a little business first. So let's, let's just discuss what you, you know, I want to know what you want to hear. And then I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, you know? <laughs> and uh, it was amusing because I pulled out a, you know, I 
opened up my notebook and it was a notepad and it was just a couple pages of things. And they looked at it and like, you know, are you here to interview us or us to interview you? And I said, well, a little bit of both. Yep. I said, Jeff, you called me. I was fine where I was. I might not ever win and go much farther than I was, but I'm, I was pretty fine. And you want me to come over here. And obviously there's a reason and there's a reason why you chose me. So let's go over why and what I'm going to need for me, what I'm going to need for us to be successful here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it worked out because they thought uh, the guy, it was, what was funny was the guy with the money after we spoke was the first guy to leave and said, if you guys don't fire, uh, if you don't hire him, then you can count me out with all the, all the investments and everything I do here. I'm out of here. And he left. <laughs> and I was like, man, that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, really cool. That was really That's cool. Great... And Jeff, Jeff just smiled and Larry Brown was like, I like this guy. And, uh, and from there, you know, I got the job and, and then 15 years, it was a, it was a great 15 years. It really was. Yeah, man. 15 years, man. That's, oh, that's incredible. I mean, like, so when from start to finish, you know, think about building a program, I think this kind of just kind of feels like where it's going. Like when you're, what was the evolution of the program then in that 15 years? Like, did you, did all those things come to fruition? Most of those things that you had the checklist come to fruition? Without a doubt, without a doubt. The, the admin, you know, first of all, when you're, we, what you really need is you need continuity of a coaching staff and you need admin. And if you have admin and AD, everything that's going to be supportive, which I really, really did. Um, it was sort of easy to get to where we needed to be very quickly. You know, talking about a, a seventh period class where I could have my baseball kids and then I can have them on a regular basis on, throughout the year. And after tryouts, I can add kids in there and they can change their schedules and I can have my entire class there. I can lift, I can, I can practice, I can get out there early. Um, I was able to build a practice field where the people before me tried to and wreck things. And I had great parents, uh, which doesn't always happen. Um, and we were able to build a practice infield, legitimate practice infield behind my left field. So we had a diamond back there that we went ahead and we did first and thirds and bunk coverages and base running and everything there. So we wouldn't wreck the game field. And then mm -hmm. we went ahead and, and, you know, more or less hit and scrimmaged on our field. Um, we also got lights as soon as we won the first state title, which was two years in, you know, they were all in for getting lights and we got lights and then we had, you know, night games and that was huge. And we got a good crowds and we just got successful so fast that, um, you know, if, if we didn't, if we didn't win, I mean, in 15 years, we won 12 district titles. Um, we were in 12 regional finals. Uh, we won four of them, went to state finals four times and won three of them in a national championship. So we were really successful in 15 years. And, and when we didn't win, it was like something was, you know, what, why? I mean, <laughs> what, what happened there? Why did that, that break down? But in the beginning, I mean, building that field, you know, adding bat, bat, batting cages and hitting areas and bullpens and taking bullpen off the field and putting on the outside and, and then the lights and, and then the backstop and getting the rec facility look out of there and making it like a, a mini college, uh, a small college stadium and, and the parents buying in and, and, and raising lots of money to be able to do what we need to do to make it look nice. And then starting the same type of of, of, of tournament. We ran one of the biggest tournaments in, in South Florida and it was in Broward County and same guys, Pepe Ortega, a couple scouts coming to me, Ray, Ray, you know, invite these guys, this guy, this guy. And I mean, I had guys, you got guys in the bigs right now that played at our field or in our tournaments. Oh, and it, cool. it, it, it's really, really cool that we had that type of following and that type of those type of players and those type of teams. I mean, you had, um, you know, uh, Tukey, Toussaint, uh, played there. I mean, I can go on and on. It's just, it's hard to remember all the names, but if you were to sit there and, and look at some of these guys in the big leagues, uh, guys that were in the world series, guys that were in, in the conference championships, uh, it was just, we had so many big ball players go through there and the scouts and the fans, it just became such a great venue that people wanted to come there and play. And, and we always, we always had such tough schedules. You know, we didn't want to sit there and play soft schedule. We played the toughest to get you ready for the end of the year. And, and uh, just the building of it little by little by little, where it just became such a power. It was one of the best public schools programs around. And I'm not tooting my horn. It's just, that's just how it was. Right. That's what um, it was. 
yeah, it's just what it is what it is. And it, it was what it was. Cause it's not like that anymore, but um, it, it was just so right now I, in my eyes, I think it's Douglas. I think Douglas with Fitzy now is like the biggest public school, especially in Broward County could be in an even Palm beach. He's just monopolized and, and the kids will, you know, sometimes they do the right way. They might be, it sounds crazy. They might move into the area, rent apartments, whatever, to, to be able to go and play baseball there and have the opportunity to not only play there, but at the next level, because they know you're going to work for them to go ahead yeah. and get to a collegiate level. And, and Fitzy's one of those guys. And it, and at the end, when he was there, because he was at Heritage first, and he had coached Hosmer and he coached, you know, he, he ended up getting Douglas's job and um, at a great time. And he was able to revamp that, turn that around. And he's won a couple state titles there already and a couple national championships now. One baseball America, one perfect game last year where he's taken over down there. It's very obvious. And uh, but he does a great job. He has a great coaching staff, great parent, great support. And that's what you really need to, to do anything at the uh, at that level is you need continuity. You need support uh, from admin, from parents. The players have to buy in. And if you have all that happening and you have talent it's sort of hard not to win. Mm -hmm. How were you able to do that? So like, how, how were you able to get that buy -in? You think it was just a matter of like, look, we just need these things. And just like, you were just all in committed to those things. Like how were you able to create such a buy-in? Like you said, so quick. Well, once, once the very first year, they, it was funny because when I walked in there, they were known as um, it was a derogatory term, but it was the Pembroke Pines. Hmm. And uh, the PPP, it was a triple P. That's what they used to call them. And I'm like, you know what? We're going to change that right away. There's too much talent here in the in the area for you guys not to be able to be successful. You know, so the first thing was, one of the first things was we we changed the culture. Um, we changed the look of the facility first. The culture came sort of with it. They saw that I was all in, that it didn't matter. You know, it, the, the time was of no essence. I was there. 24 seven. I was there six days a week. The only day I took off was Sundays. You know, you want to be here. We're here. Uh, later when the lights came on, we flip them on. You want to stay, we'll hit at night. You want to stay, you want to get fly balls at night. We'll do it. That was early on. I mean, 30 years of marriage, my wife, my family has, has put up with a lot, but I, I was, I was all in and you know, my, my wife let me be all in. And um, the admin was like, hey, look, you want to do this? You want to be successful? We're behind you. Do what you need to do. But it, the coaching staff was key. I mean, I, I was able to get top, top guys. I mean, you're talking Howard Stein, which is now a head coach at West Broward. I had Eric Cruz, which what came from Sunset, came up. He was uh, uh, played at FIU. Uh, Howard played at Jacksonville. I had coaches that played at a high D1 level, maybe some minor league level. Um, Noel Figueroa, these guys were all Cruz is now a, a scout with the Diamondbacks, unless he's changed teams. And and the other two are uh, Figgy took over uh, Noel Figueroa took over Flanagan when I left and came up here for family reasons. And, you know, instead of staying there and finishing my career there, I, I had then family came first finally. And I had to, I had to come up here because of, you know, cancer and, and my father being on a, uh, on a, a deathbed and I had to take care of family, but, the, the people that I had surrounded myself with, which is very, very important, not only with admin and parents and players, your coaching staff is key and the continuity of it is key. Joe Chaco that was with me at the, at Dr. Crop came with me. So he was my first guy. And then getting these other guys, it, it was a no brainer. Everybody had a position coach and we were, we were, you know, really good at what we did and, and they listened and they took heed of it. And, you know, we were we were constantly in the mix of, of winning state titles every year. And that's why I said, you know, three to me was not enough. You know, you, I just think, <laughs> why, why, why didn't we win five or six, you know? Yeah. Coach, I, I've, I've got to I got to I got to ask because I'm thinking because and uh, I talked to John Lauer about this and because we try to figure out like, how are you creative with with first off getting a staff like that you know are like all these guys volunteering their time like i mean how are you able to like creatively get all those guys on board um you know through that is that where the booster club does come in that come in to help um well, that's just, good hey, i'm sorry i cut you off go ahead finish well, up no, i was thinking the, the other part would be like you know because i talk, like i said i talked to coach lowry about this is and then how 
how do you manage all of them? You know what I mean? So first off, just the creativity of like, how do you get all those guys, you know, on the staff? You know, I know that your program spoke for itself, but you said that kind of happened right away too. Well, here, here's the thing. Um, when I got there, that was some of those bullet points I told you I had to have. If they wanted me. I, I had to have a staff there on campus. So I actually, brought, when I brought Joe Chaco, he wasn't a certified teacher, but they gave him a job as a security officer, security job. I had Eric Cruz. He came in and he became the bright, uh, the bright uh, teacher, which was he took care of uh, all the kids and helping them get into colleges and the contacts and everything that he had to do. Um, Noel Figueroa came in later on in a couple of years because he was there for 2006. So he wasn't there in four or five. And he's an English teacher. Got him in there. Howard Stein was the only one that he didn't need to be in there because he was already teaching at a, at a different school, a smaller school, a private school. And at the time, they couldn't get him in with me, but he it was okay because he was teaching over there, got off at the same time, and was when, f- within five, ten minutes of our school. So to get them jobs there was a key, and I told them that was going to be a key for me to be able to get this program where it needed to be. And I, I told them if they couldn't do that, I, 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 couldn't, I didn't really want to take the job. And they mm-hmm. guaranteed that I would be able to have most, if not all, on staff. Um, Payment wise, you know, you, you only get so many stipends. So, right. you know, with the money we raised, that wasn't an issue. It was never an yeah. issue. We always had, we always were able to take care of, care of our coaches. You know, we ran camps. Um, there was a time where people were, weren't really too bothered with or worried about people uh, running, running their own travel ball teams in the summer, as well as camps in the winter. And then, and then also having, you know, doing lessons, uh, and getting making a little bit of money, but also that you're doing lessons, but you're not doing them with your own players because that's taboo. You're making your own players pay to get coached by you. It'd be by younger kids that aren't in the high school yet, so that there was no like recruiting things going on. It 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 was, or they were private school kids, and so it worked out where um, they were well taken care of at, for the most Good. part, as well as they could be taken care of. Yeah, and it's good. I mean, I think it's all part of running a program. Like, you have to be creative and you have to find those ways, too. So, it's it's great that you have those avenues. So, like, yeah, my other thing, the second part of that was, like, um, was, like, you just kind of knowing that and kind of saying, okay, uh, uh, is that how you manage it? Be like, look, this is just your job. you kind of upfront with their jobs, and then they just, you kind of, you trust them and let yeah, it roll. I, I didn't get to that point. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I forgot about that. Well, you know what? You got to you gotta give give your coaches the, lead, the, the leeway to – to go out there and, and do their thing. And that's, that's the reason I got them. Um, you know, Eric Cruz was probably one of the best infield coaches that I've ever seen. Howard Stein was one of the best hitting instructors, but one of the best outfield uh, guys around. Uh, Joe Chaco worked with the catchers. I had Figgy, when he came in in 06, he was another hitting guru, but also helped Cruz with the infielders. So the only thing that I really had to worry about was my pitching staff. And I took care of the pitching. I called every single pitch. Chaco took care of my catching. Cruz took care of my infield with Fig. And Stein had the outfield. I mean, it was a great staff. And eventually, you know, there's people that interview and they wanted to come in. And I, I was able to add another guy to help with pitching with JV guys and then help me with the varsity guys, Pete Greenwood. And, and you know, you, you have guys, but then there's times you don't want any, you don't need anybody else. You don't want to, you don't want to, change it too much so it's like we're good right now there's no reason to add 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 just to have bodies you know you want guys that have a lot of knowledge that can go ahead and, and transfer it over to the kids and 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 make sure that they're they're willing to go ahead and listen and learn and, and improve and again if that doesn't work then they need to leave as well but um it was the staff the staff i can always say it's it's always about uh the staff and the players buying in and the admin and the parents supporting, supporting what you're doing. Yeah. And that, that, that's a tough thing to come by nowadays. You know that. Yeah. No, for you to get that support right then and there. And yeah, that's it's pretty amazing. And then for them to find those staff members, to get a job, you know, you get a job first and foremost. I mean, that's, that says a lot there, just their commitment to you and absolutely. You got in a great situation. <laughs> yeah. It sure. was, it was a great situation for a long time. Heck, they mm-hmm. built. They ended up 
one of the things I told them they needed was besides class, I said, you need to go ahead and, and revamp your weight room or, or, or just build a new one. And sure as, uh, I, as I'm talking to you, they said, okay. And they built a brand new weight room and they had the old weight room. The old weight room ended up being football and PE. And the other one was baseball and PE. And they let me stay in there. I had an office in there, set a little room that worked, looked over the weight room. And it was just, it was a phenomenal job for a long time. I mean, I had my own little baseball office looking into the weight room, had my classes. My last period of the day was just baseball. It was, uh, I mean, we built it and it was all updated, brand new stuff. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was unbelievable. It really was. Yeah, it's awesome, man. It's another reason why you're going to the Hall of Fame, coach. Just a well, great situation. Many reasons. It was, it's never just you. It's not, it, it if it is, I don't know who can do it by themselves. I mean, I, if I didn't have the staff, if I didn't have the admin, if I didn't have the 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 ads that would help me, the players the, as good as they were to buy in, and especially if I didn't have my family that let me do what I did, none of this would have happened. None of it. It's not about one person. It never is. And if anybody thinks it is, their head's too big. It's got to be popped because it's not. Absolutely love it. Ah, oh, so much. What? How? When, I guess from start to finish, and you think about your long career and things you've had, was there things that that you look back and say, man, I cannot believe I did it that way, or I can't believe I did it? Like positively? No, nah, like a negative, like a negative. Like, be like, man, like I would never do that. Like, I can't believe I did that. Or like, man, you just, or things that you look back mm -hmm. on and say like, wow, I can't believe I did it that way. And, and this is how like maybe you evolved as a coach. Yeah, there's always there's always some things. I mean, you know, it's funny. I, I was able to be a student of not only the game, but of other coaches. And so I learned a lot of things to do properly or differently in a more positive fashion because of what I was seeing. And then, you know, I might have done them wrong because I didn't know any better. I know that when I was young. Man, I was just young and stupid, young and dumb, because I didn't even even know I was going to keep doing this. I, I mean, when they threw me into the fire, I took a team that was 0 and 7 over because the football coach didn't like the head baseball coach, and he told the principal he was double dipping, which meant he was getting paid for driver's education uh, during the spring season while I was out there running a lot of the practices by myself, but understand I had just gotten back from playing some independent ball and ball in Italy. And I wasn't even sure I was just helping him out because he was my buddy and he needed an assistant coach. Next thing you know, you know, I was telling him, Hey, you got a good little good team here and we're going to be okay. You know, just let, he was doing it in the fall. I'm like, don't do this in the spring. Cause you know, we could be successful out here. You need to stay out here with us. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it didn't happen. And we were 0 and seven, but we were 0 and seven because he was playing the wrong guys. He wasn't out there watching what I was seeing. And I kept telling him, and, um, you know, I learned what not to do. It's like, you know, parents okay. did this that, and the other for him and he was playing the wrong people. And I was just like, you know what? Um, they're not good. And next thing you know, they call him in the office and they confront him about nothing about baseball being 0 and 7 about the double dipping this and that. I get called in out of nowhere where I'm, I'm not even really full-time working there. I didn't even know I was going to be there and keep doing this. I was still thinking about going back and trying to get the call up Maneri and see if I could coach at the next level. And, and, um, you know, they say, Hey, look, we're going to fire him. We're going to hire you. Did you know he was doing it? Yeah. He's a grown man. I'm not going to, he needed help. I'm helping him. He says, well, we need you as an intern for the rest of the year. And he's, he's going to be done today. So you, if you don't mind, we need you to take over for the rest of the year and then we can make a decision at the end of the year, what we want to do. I was just like, holy crap. I looked at him. He goes, you need to do it for the kids. I screwed up. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. We were 0-7. I hated the hats we had. <laughs> <I'll never forget. laughs> today. One thing I didn't like was the hats that he had. They were wool. They were hot. They were, I was just like, look. And we had the PAL was a support system for us at the time. Police Athletic League. And I was like, you know what? Billy, Billy Williams and Bernie... I was like, hey, Bernie Weiner. I was like, hey, two sergeants and a, a, a and a lieutenant ran the whole thing. And I was like, hey, guys, I need you to do me a favor and how quick we can do this. I need some hats. Da, da, da. Next thing you know, we got new hats. I told, I had to tell the kids. Um, you know, they asked where he was. I'm like, dude, uh, he's he's done for the year. I got it's my job now. 
And, you know, as an assistant, you're one way with the kids. Yeah. But as a head, it stops with you. So my hat sort of changed. It's almost like, you know, you get in an argument, turn the hat around. Yeah. And the hat totally turned around. They were like, coach, you're different. And I go, I got to be because now I'm running the show. And what I say goes, there is no looking over my shoulder. He makes it. It's my decision. End of story. And there's going to be changes with the lineup. You guys got to understand. So I started putting out the best guys out there, not a guy's parent that owned a restaurant and his son had to play. So I put out the best guys and we were 0 and 7 and we ended up 14 and 11. So we went 14 and 4 the rest of the way. Wow. And at that point, I knew it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't, it's all about the type of individual, the type of talent you have. You know, I learned what not to do. Um, but then I also did some things as a young kid when I look back that, man, I couldn't, I look back, I'm like, wow, what a, what a jerk I was to these kids. Um, you know, like I was by myself. I didn't have an assistant when I took over, I was his only assistant back. And I was like, I have nobody Mm. and uh, just prepping for games or, or going on the road and having to take infield outfield you know, take IO and then having to get the lineups and everything together and having a kid write the line and then he does it wrong. And I'm berating. I'm like, I, I wrote it. All you had to do was copy it. But coach, you put once I go, those are the positions. And they put the positions in the number of hitting the hitting order. Uh. I'm like, dude, I need that. And I, and, you know, it just, as you, as I went on and I, and that kid's now, uh, I mean, he was an officer. He ended up being like a Lieutenant or a captain. And I mean, I, I coached some guys, I kept some guys, out of like gangs and stuff, which I'm real proud of and ended up being like cops, attorneys, dentists. And this is at Miami beach where we had like the Miami beach posse. This is back in Miami vice days. Oh. And uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. What transpired there very quickly. And that's where I knew I sort of like this, this is what I want to do, but what level do I want to do it at? And after so long, you just, I became a lifer. You know, you became a lifer at the high school level, not worrying about, going to the next level. Cause then what am I going to take my family uproot them and then make less money over there? It, it just, it was just something I really, really loved to do. It's something that I thought when I was in high school, I didn't have, and I was, ha- I had to do everything on my own and get better on my, you know, um, make contacts for college or do whatever. I just really, really took a liking to it. And I saw this is not what I should be doing. And then when I did things wrong, I, I looked back at them like maybe the next year or year, you sort of evaluate yourself. And when you have a coaching staff, you sit down and evaluate one another. And what do we do? What, what can we do better to make us better? Um, just like you'd have player evals. And um, I mean, there were, there were things that I learned that I definitely didn't, I shouldn't have done and didn't want to do anymore. And, and, and just um, didn't do them anymore. Got better. I got better as a person. I got better as a player. I got better as a mentor. I got better as a coach. Uh, a, a surrogate parent at times, learning more about the kids, getting more involved in their, in their lives, their families, you know, what, how they're doing off the field. Cause it's not all about baseball. I mean, uh, li- it's life lessons um, and, and they can become stronger because of fa- it's a game of failure. You're going to fail a lot more in this game than any other game. And if you do that in life, usually you're fired or you're looked like a failure and it, it's just, you're bouncing back, constantly bouncing back. I mean, you're striking out, getting back up, hitting the game winner, making an error. Next time, making a play, uh, you know, missing a pitch, making a pitch. It, it's when you're hitting three, 400 and you're supposedly good, you do that in anything else, you're fired or you're failing. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, you learn how to deal with it. It teaches them how to bounce back right away. And you got to keep them on an even keel. You got to keep them, going in the right direction. So they're productive citizens because baseball is not forever. I mean, how many high school kids become major leaguers? You know, <laughs> less than a fingernail, if you're lucky, and you don't even coach a lot of those kids. So um, I learned a lot over over the last 34 years. I really have. And, and everything has changed, you know, from 89, 90 to the 90s to 2000 to 2010 through the 2010 to 20. And now, up to you know where we are now i've seen a lot of changes a lot of changes in this whole thing where no travel ball now travel ball means everything um it's it's been a hell of a ride trey it really yeah is. <laughs> yeah i appreciate you going through with that it's, it's great to learn uh for, from you like i said like you you were kind of like you said student of the game and learning what not to do but it's always nice to just kind of get like 
the inexpensive experience, you know, kind of getting someone's uh, perspective like yours uh, of things. Because uh, you talked about a couple of things, like just being in their lives and stuff. Like, what did you start to do? Like, for examples, like a couple of examples of maybe how you start getting more involved in their life. How did you end up, you know, doing these things that you said? What were, what were some examples or maybe some of the best things that you thought that really made a big difference? Well, I mean, you know, you, 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 first of all, parent, when you have parent meetings, it's a mandatory thing. And when you don't have both parents, you see, okay, right away, one parent family, no dad, mom, no mom, dad, no parents, grandparent, aunt. So, you know, right there, there's going to be some struggles, you know, um, you know that, I, I mean, I had found out that I had a kid living in a car at one point um, where, you know, we had, we had some meetings and the kids were like, coach, he, he's, his parents had to go back to the country. He doesn't want to leave. He's staying here for baseball. And, you know, and the kid, the kids will tell you too, when they know that you're, you really care, the kids will open up, but you know, finding out one of your players lives in a car from the other kids. And then you're like, okay, I'm taking care of this. This is something I got to do. I got to take care of this kid. And then yep. getting him a place and going through the school and getting the, the support they need. Uh, to get him into a place and be able to finish out his high school career, not only on the field, but get a diploma and, and try to get him into a college and get him into a junior college. And then, you know, then it's on him and, and I can't be there for you, but you're going to have to take care of what you got to do. And then seeing him be successful. Um, you know, there, you, you got to be able to speak to kids and it, it's gotten tougher over the years, believe me, but you know, you got to be able to spend the time. And I know, I, know that, I mean, Pudge is great at this. Todd's great at this. There's probably so many coaches that are great at this, but then there's so many young coaches that, you know, that sometimes you get lost and, and you're worried more about the winning and you don't want to get fired, you know, this, that, and the other, you're more worried about the W's and the L's than you are about the growth of a young kid and seeing him move on and be successful. This is only a very small part of their life. And there's so many bigger and better things yet to come. If this is the best thing that ever happens in his life, even a state championship, that's not a good life. It's got to be one of the best things that might happen to him in his lifetime. The relationships, you know, he's going to, hopefully they, they get great jobs, a great education, great jobs, or they have a great trade and they can have a good job, support a family, having a baby, getting married. Those are some of the best things that can happen to you in your lifetime. You know, getting a game winning hit is something you remember forever, but it can't be the best thing that's ever happened in your life. You know, it's just, it's just part of your life. And then, and this aspect, this little bit of four years or three years, depending on how long you have them and in the, in playing baseball, it's just a very small, they're going to remember it because you're going to have a big impact on them if you're worth a grain of salt, but it's, it's going to be, the impact might be a lot bigger than any games they play and how you, how you, how you speak to them, how you, how you, the rapport you have with them and, and how they grow. And are there things that, uh, you know, you wish you would have done differently when you look back? Yeah. I mean, when, when you leave a, a club, when you leave a program, there's going to be people that aren't, aren't happy with you because you left and you were, and, and they're sort of like upset because you were, you're, you know, whether you, if you're, you're not a good person, they could give a, a rat's behind that you leave, but you leave a program like I had a, I'm in the fourth program and I'm done now, but I can tell you when I left beach, they weren't happy, but they, but they understood. And that was a good leave. You know, we left in the semifinal loss to Southridge. They went on to the to, to final four. It was, it was, it was a they I, I had built that program up to where my assistant took over and it was, it was, it was fine. Crop, you know, when I left, I said, Hey, look, we might meet up in a playoff game. And I think where I'm going, we're going to be pretty good. And I, I think that where we're going, it, we'd have a tough time getting by next. Next thing you know, two years later, met up with him, and we 10-run ruled him. <laughs> <laughs> sort of that was when I went to Flanagan and I played crop. But crop, they were sort of, you know, sad that I left. When I left Flanagan, it wasn't so much sad. They were upset because those juniors that became seniors didn't get to have me as their coach as seniors. But they did have my assistant that was with me the whole time, Figgy or Figueroa and Noel, and they went to a regional final. They lost the regional final to go to state, but, you know, they, they were upset I, lo I left, but sometimes you got to do what you have to do and for, for yourself or your, for your family. Um, but, you know, there, there's – the game is more important than the, any individual. It's more important than a player. It's more important than the coach. 
you know, there's a culture, there's a, a program. You know, we always used to say it's, it's, it's program, team, individual. Program is more important than the team. Team is more important than any individual out there, and including coaches. So you got to you follow that line and you're like, OK, I, I, I get it. And, and you have to have that that feeling that every kid is important. You want to make sure you're you, you know what's going on with them. I mean, you've had I've had kids that had parents with cancer. I've had, you know, not not full families and just deaths during the year. It, it's you have to be involved with the kids um, and not just for the baseball aspect of it. No wonder they were upset, Coach. <laughs> but hey, so here's a so here's things, and and I think this is a lot. Um, I hope you, I. How did you know? Well. You did. You did more than enough. Um, how do you know, like, when it was time? Like, what did what were the things that were presented uh, to you, or what did you feel about when you knew it was time to maybe make a change from crop to or Miami Beach to crop and crop to Flanagan, Flanagan to Phillips? Well. The the being time it wasn't the time it was just something that I was able one I was able to get closer to my my family and not be so far away on a regular basis but to open a brand new school I thought that was very interesting and to have my athletic director be a base a former baseball coach that I was very uh, familiar with and and friends with I thought that would be a great scenario a great situation for me so that was easy although. Leaving Miami Beach was not easy because of the kids and the parents and everything in the bill, but I left them in great hands. My my right hand man for for most of the time I was there, Lou Sanchez. Um, again, like I said, he it's funny because some of my coaches now are scouts or, or or other coaches, and I have players that are now college coaches or or pro scouts or, or pro. <laughs> coaches. It's sort of ironic, but um, that was sort of it was difficult, but it was the right move for me and my family, and also pretty interesting for me to open a brand new school going from crop to Flanagan wasn't even a, a second thought. It was just the right thing to do. If I was going to continue to be a high school coach, I wanted to put myself in a situation where if I had the talent and I had the facility and I had the opportunity, I wanted to know, could I coach and be, win and be a winner? You know, and I mean, not just with the players and having a, I mean, win. could I win? Yeah. And, um, sort of answered that you know i did it i got the right coaches i had the right admin ad was supportive the players bought in the parents were great i mean not all parents are great obviously mm -hmm. um but very supportive and we were able to do what i thought we could do there and i and if anything i know it looks like i was successful if anything sometimes i think i underachieved in some games where I think, like I said, I think we should have three more rings. <laughs> yeah. As a, as a coach, if you ever listen to, you know, if you read Skip Bertman's book or, or you, you listen to Palmer, you listen to these people, uh, Nick Saban, um, Belichick, all these guys, when they, when they, they never accept losing. Mm -mm. They always think that they're going to win and that if they lost, they should have won. And they didn't prepare well enough for, the guys that make the plays, you, you, you want to win every year. You want to win it all. And, and um, I thought if I went to Flanagan, I'd have better talent. I'd have a better facility. I'd have better support, um, a, a wider range, range of being able to pick and choose players. And I was right. And then getting the, the, the coaching staff I got, man, we, we, we did exactly what I thought we could do. And like I said, I thought we, we you know, we, we might've been able to do more really. Mm. So it's really just a matter of just um, like coach Lawson, he talks about this a lot of just it, it is attaching yourself to a winner. So it sounds like, you know, you were attaching yourself and just trying to put yourself in the right situation to win or just be, you know, be with the winner. Cause like, you know, you need to have that situation to win. Like there, there are, you know, there are really great coaches out there some bad situations. Without a oh, I without a doubt, with the, without a doubt, you're totally right, Trey. There's plenty of coaches that are very well versed in, in what they need to do. They know what they need to do. They can bust their butts, but they're never going to be successful. Maybe because of the clientele, where they're at, the personnel, or not the backing of the admin or the. There's 
you can only go so far. And like, that's, that was the point of that, you know, when I was at Dr. Crop, I could only get so far, but I was curious what I could do if I had more. Um, when I left Flanagan, um, there was some things that were happening, you know, the admin had changed. The support wasn't the same. It was there, but it wasn't really the same. Parents were changing. Um, the play, we still had talent, but then there was other things in my, my personal life that took place. You know, my father-in-law and, and mother-in-law lived in Ocala. My father-in-law, was, his health was failing. Um, my son had just graduated, was able to get a scholarship upstate. Um, I thought, you know, that, they needed some help. My sister ended up getting a uh, stage four ovarian. Um, you know, I just, it was just a point where it was more about like, I always had preached family. Family is always first. Um, and I thought, you know, this is a uh, time. It was a very difficult move. My daughter was with me hundred percent right from the get go. She's a volleyball player. She's playing co collegiate volleyball. And she was like, yeah, we got to go. We'll go. I'll go with you. I'm ready. And my wife was like, we'll do whatever you need to do. Um, you know, she she was very supportive. Um, chose Dr. Phillips because it was in Orlando and my, that's where my family was. I have two sisters up here, the one with ovarian, which is now um, in uh, remission. Uh, my father-in-law did end up passing away within a year or so of us. It was like a year or so of us moving up here. I was able to do what I could to help out. Um, the mother-in-law still here, ready to move to where the rest of their family is in North Carolina. But I, 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 that was a very difficult move, but I know I had to do what I had to do and um, did what I could up here. You know, you got COVID hitting the first year, walked up here, changed their culture as well. Won a district title right away, which they weren't used to doing. Uh, that was like the biggest thing for them, which um, when we we're at Flanagan, we made it seem like that's what we were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And here it was like, God, ah, we did it. And then we go into regionals and they, it was just too big a game for them. Following year, COVID hits, we don't finish. Last year, we win another district, which they had not ever gone back to back. So you throw COVID out, it was a back to back. So they thought that was the biggest thing. And, you know, we blew a lead in, in a regional game, which again, I thought we should have won. And, and um, it was just, I, I felt it felt like uh, man I didn't want to go out that way but it was time just because I think I think I could step back and go you know what I've 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 done my time I've done what I wanted to do I don't need to prove anything else to myself and I think now's the time where I can sit that sit back and I can help another coach yeah do what I think they're capable of doing and I've I found that um and made a really uh, a great couple relationships up here but especially with um, someone I think Todd, Todd would love Fitzgerald. Cause I'm really still very close with him, miss him a lot. But, um, with Eric Lassiter at Windermere, which has a couple guys, uh, Montgomery and, and Bryce Hubbard over at FSU, he puts out some great talent. He's one of the owners of power baseball, a big travel organization that more or less has monopolized central Florida. And my first year up here, we met, we talked, he's about 20 years younger than me with a little girl. Hmm. We talked about family and what not to, what not to miss, you know, make sure that you don't miss a lot of things. So you miss a lot of things as a coach when you put a lot of time in, you know, you're missing, sometimes you miss birthdays. Sometimes you miss, uh, you miss Valentine's day a hell of a lot because when the season starts, yep. you know, you're missing, you got to put off trips, you got to put off vacations. Then you have to do summer ball and you do fall. I mean, you fall ball, spring, summer, when's it end? And it's, it's, it's difficult and you try to balance things and, you know, I'm trying to get that across to him and we've become very good friends. And although I'm 20 years older than him, <laughs> but I'm getting across to him and I'm helping him and, and, and we've, we've bonded and become real good friends and coaches and we coach together. And it's funny because our team in the travel ball uh, organization industry, um, we went 30, I'd like to say 31 and four, 31 and five or something stupid. Mm. And, and ended up number two in the country this last year. And it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun again. And I don't have to be the guy calling everything, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. helping him. And then now I can help him in his, in his passion and see how far he can get. Cause I think he's a hell of a coach. He coached at a college level. He's coached at now he's, you know, he's at Windermere. He was at Tavares. He was at 
Apopka, where he went to high school, and now he's at a great place that brings in a lot of talent. So I, I, I like being the guy that's not in charge. I like being the guy behind the scenes now, just being an assistant and helping out, being the first base coach, telling them when to steal because I, I, with pitch counts and what they're throwing. And it's so easy at the high school level, it really is. And then helping the hitters out and getting to know these kids. I, I, it's, it's, I've been able to take a step back and breathe and I'm enjoying it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I bet you are, man. That's, it's what a, what a lucky, you know, I'm sure that Windermere coach, what's his name again? Windermere High Eric, coach. Eric Lassiter. Eric Lassiter. And, and um, the travel is power, power baseball. Todd's well, yeah. well, it's a, it's a great organization. I've never seen a travel ball organization do as much for these kids to get them into colleges as this one. And that's the mm-hmm. only reason I attach myself to it because of how they really care for the kids. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that, that you show, like how much they care? Oh, they're, let me tell you what they make sure it doesn't matter. It You don't have to be one of the studs that are going to Vanderbilt um, uh, or, to Auburn, Florida, Florida State, Georgia, Tennessee, you name the SEC schools, they've got them going there. Miami, you don't have to be, you, these guys get everybody to some type of college, Tom, to Mars Hill, Thomas University, schools that you might not be aware of or familiar with. They're making sure that these guys, they get to live out their dream and have a shot at playing somewhere after high school, they are on the phone tirelessly. I mean, I'm we're on the way to we are on the way to tournaments, and Eric's on the phone constantly <laughs> with these coaches. It's it's sort of mm-hmm. funny. It's amusing, but we're trying. I'm writing up the lineup. I'm looking at him. I'm like, he's like, yeah, 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 and he's talking to the guy, and then he's like, hey, I got Ray Evans here. I'm not sure if you know him. Oh yeah, I know Ray. And I say yeah, and then I I'll tell him a little bit about the kid, but they're. He, he, Brian Dempsey, Jesse Marlowe, those are the three owners. They are constantly, they're grooming kids. They're teaching kids. It's not just pay and play. They run a facility. They're constantly, they know what the kids can do from velo, from spin rate to, to the hitting, um, exit velos. I mean, they work their butts off. And then they make sure at the end of the day that they've given these kids as many opportunities as possible to move on and the phone calls and this and that. It's, it's, it's very impressive. It really is. So you've really seen like, uh, man, like what a great, like just experiences that you've had, um, to see like, and it sounds, you know, like, you know, you, you, well, you, you mentioned spin rate, you mentioned exit velocity, you know, and you know, it's not like you've been coaching you just started coaching this. This is something that, you know, you're, so you seem really well versed. So it's like, have you always, it's, you know, when people say, oh, he's a 30-year coach, and, you know, you get that kind of like, oh, well, he probably doesn't like these kind of things, you know? Like, so do you, it seems like, are you pretty, Are you have you always been pretty adaptable? Like, you've always kind of been, been okay with, like, the newer, maybe technology or the new terms and new things that, 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 as you've seen the game evolve? You, you have to, you have to adapt and you have to move with the times. So it was like, you can't keep running if you're a football coach. You can't run the same offense if you don't have the personnel to run it. You know, you can't be a team that's going to steal bases if you don't have speed. You know, you can't hit, you can't hit, you know, for power when you have five foot nine guys with a uh, that are soaking wet a buck twenty five. You know, you have to adapt to your personnel, but you still want the kids to understand. Look, there's you don't don't think that you can be out too big. He's a, the, the major league guys are really freaks in nature. OK, and I don't want to sit there and tell you, hey, look, I want I want, you know, I want exit velocity because that means you're squaring up balls. Do I need launch angle? Let me tell you what the big boys. Yes. I want you to put that ball. It doesn't have to be up in there, but it's got to be out, out. And I want you to sit there and hit nothing but doubles and home runs and be a power guy. And the you other guys, I want you to smash balls. But if you lift them, guess what? They're going like three 300 feet they're going 320 you just don't have it in your body right. you're not six foot five 270 pounds of muscle you're you can still smash balls 
So you got to sort of adapt and and go with your personnel. You know, there's guys work on, you know, uh, with drive line and 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 they they get real strong. But no matter what they do, they're staying at 83, 84. They they think they can get to 90, but you know what? You're gonna blow your arm out. Yeah. Look, let, how about let's learning to sit there and dial in and spot and be able to throw three, four pitches for strikes. Three would be fine. If you can throw two for strikes and show another one, you'll still get through high school. And you want to play college level, give me three and, and have a fourth one for show. But yeah, you have to adapt. You, you, I want, you know, you, you work on certain things where they can get the spins, high spin rate. You can sit there and get a little bit of launch angle, but really get exit velo on your swings and, and work on things like that. And you steal things from coaches. I mean, you go to conventions because you you share things with one another. It's not like football where, hey, I can't give you my offense and I don't want you to see my defense. Baseball is a certain breed where we all share things and you steal yep. things. You look on, you're looking on TikTok or Twitter and you see, man, that's a pretty cool drill. Or you go to the conventions and you're listening and you see, and you're like, man, I'm taking that. And then you go use it and you see what it does for some of the kids. It helps a lot. Some of the kids, it doesn't really, doesn't really click and you use something different. But yeah, you got you to gotta adapt to the times. Everyone, if you don't adapt to the times, you're, you're not going to be successful in anything you do. Think about it. <laughs> in anything yep. you do, if you don't adapt, as things move forward, you're just not going to be very successful. You need to adapt to the times. So yeah, it just, it just, it's just really cool. And even, even for travel ball, you know, you hear a lot of guys even now, especially, you know, big high school. And I bet you, you know, you go to the high school association, it, you just hear a lot of guys and they don't speak highly of travel ball. You know, where here you are with the career that you've had in high school baseball and going in the Hall of Fame of the high school, like, and you love travel baseball, like, and you're in it and you're, and you're, you also found a good one and things like that. Uh, but I, even that, even that for, I think you adapting to the times is, is, is something to be said. Well, you know, like I said, when you talk to Todd, he runs a travel ball organization, you know, so it's easy for him because he runs it and then there are his own kids that play for him. And he gets other kids as well, but it's the one, the reason why uh, uh, I'm enjoying it now is because of who I'm with. Okay. You know, you, if you're with people that just take people's money and they just throw the kids out there. No, I mean that, you know, you're still, you're still coaching. We're still teaching, making sure they understand what they're doing, right. What they're doing wrong. Hey, look, we got three schools here looking at these guys. They, if somebody else does well and shows up, they're going to be wondering, Hey, who's this guy? So you're still trying to make them understand you go about things the right way. You, you bust your ass on and off the field. I mean, it is, it's our nine beats their, their five, you know, that that's like, that's one of his favorite things. Eric says one of his favorite things, nine off before they get five on, you know, you are sprinting. Um, nobody wants to see any lazy kids. They don't want to see, they want to see kids that have enthusiasm for the game. that can play, have a smile and really bust their butt all the time. And yeah, you're going to have travel organizations that just take money. They don't do much for the kids. And, and, and there's not a lot of contacts for colleges. These guys work. And that's one of the reasons I like them so well. And, and, you know, some of, some of the schools or travel organizations, like they try to like take uh, credit, I would say, I mean, I know Todd and I have spoken about this. They'll take credit for kids. Like, a kid's been in in a in a high school for three years. He's on going on a senior year, and, and the coach has made a lot of contacts, and he's groomed him. He's done this and that, but he plays for this travel organization. And then, as soon as soon as the kid might make a commitment or sign, you know, they try to put it like it like they did it. You know, it was all about them. It, first of all, it's not about anybody but the kid. But That's right. who really did the work behind the scenes? Did you really do anything for the kid? And a lot of times, the high schools used to be the people. And the travel ball industry used to be the ones trying to take credit. Well, honestly, now I've seen a change. That's <laughs> sort of how it is, Trey. I've seen a change. And especially with this travel ball organization and others, there are others. Don't get me wrong. Todd does a great job. Scores, scores, scores. There's different travel ball organizations that do a really good job. But this one, th they don't need to take credit. It's just the kids give them the credit. They know that these guys are the ones making the phone call. They're the ones when they come to the tournaments are talking to the coaches. 
They're the ones sending out videos. During that whole COVID time, these guys were doing videos during the games, during the tournaments, and sending, whether it was live feed, sending them out to the coaches. So you can get lame duck travel ball organizations that try to take credit and do nothing. But when you're involved in one or see others that do a lot, you got to give them credit where credit is due. And, and, you know, uh, that's why, again, I've adapted to it. Cause I used to think the same thing. Like these guys are just taking people's money. Well, yeah. back then that's what it was. It's not like that anymore. This is like a venue for kids to get more exposure, the showcases these guys run, the amount of people that come in for it. It's live feeds to coaches at times. It's it's a big business industry now. Mm. Oh, good, man. Awesome stuff. <laughs> I love it, Coach. You do, man. I'm like, I just, it's, it's like I said, exceeding expectations, man. This has been great. Um, so speaking of that, like, so if – and I know you're good with where you're at, right? So yeah. how do you, you know, you're mentoring the Widmer coach, your uh, coach um, Lasseter, right? Lasseter. Yeah. I'm trying to. He doesn't need a lot of it, but I'm trying to keep him. More or less, it's, I don't want him to lose time with family. You know, and okay. I, I want him to understand that, that you know, and, and he's got it. He's got it right, man. He's got it right. Because he asked me, how do you do it all these years? And that was like in the first year when I met him. And he's doing it right. Like when he needs to leave. Like his daughter was playing soccer late. And when he needs to go, he goes. I'm like, go, man. Do what you got to do. I, I'm here with the other coach. We can close up. We got it. We can lock it. We can do whatever. Do what you got to do. You know, we, yep. we're going to be fine. And and he's he's a great guy. And the and his and his uh his um uh you know partners, they're great because they don't they do that full time and they know that not only does he do that. Eric does that, but he also coaches at the high school. He teaches at the high school and then he's got his family going on. So mm. they're, they're real good with him and he's real good with them. And he does a lot. I mean, he, he has a lot on his plate. He really does. So whenever he needs help, we're always there for him. Awesome. Yeah. I was just thinking about like, you know, like the, with travel ball and high school. And like you said, there's a little bit of change where, you know, how, how would you kind of run the high school program now with the heavy burden or heavy emphasis on travel showcases, you know, summer and summer baseball? Well, summer baseball, there is no summer baseball over high school kids anymore. That it's all travel. You yeah. can't even, you know, back is funny because back in Flanagan days, like my, one of my Noel Figueroa, that's now the head coach of Flanagan. He used to have, uh, a team and and it was it was great back then because even at my Miami Beach days, we it was called the PAL League with Police Athletic League and that's why I remember they helped me out when I took over. We ran a league and all the high school teams you stayed together. There was no travel ball. If you wanted to play summer ball, you played with their high school team and we had a a team a, a league of like eight teams and they were all the high school teams. And little by little, you know you had. You had Legion, you had big league, you had Legion and you had whatever leagues popped up. Um, you know, travel ball came along way later. And, um, you know, once that happened and became big business, um, you know, summer ball was now defunct. There was no Legion anymore, no more big league, no more little. League. These kids were gone and they were playing tournaments all over the country and with whatever organization they wanted to be in. Um, paying whatever type of money that their family could afford. Um, you know, fall ball, uh, you know, sometimes the kids are unsigned, uncommitted as, as juniors or seniors, they're going to tournaments on the weekends. Um, but you, you know, in fall, you're trying to get an idea of who's where and who's doing what. So are you lift, you're doing your lifting program. Uh, but then, Oh God, you know, he can't lift because he's got to throw it. It throws wrenches in things, but you work around it. And, and being part of what he does, you know, you understand because, hey, a lot of those kids are in the power program anyway. And you're like, hey, look, he's got to throw this weekend. And so he can't lift here and he can't throw in this scrimmage or he can't. So you, you just have to really, what's the key word? Adapt. <laughs> you got to adapt and, and just, hey, uh, he, if he can do it, he does it. And, and if he can't, he can't. Uh, but during the season, during the high school season, it's strictly high school. There is no if ands buts. You know, there's not you're not missing practice to go to a lesson. 
Your lessons are here. Mm-hmm. You don't need a lesson. If you need a lesson, listen to your coaches because the coaches right here are pretty damn good and they know what they're talking about. So right. just listen to us and don't go pay somebody for it. You know? Um, so during the high school season, nothing but high school. But after that, you know, you really can't hold them to anything anymore because there's so much going on. You really can't. Mm-hmm. They have their own trainers. They go to trainers. They go to this pitching coach, that hitting coach. I mean, if it works for them, great. When they come back and they're not very good, you're like, hey, you know that guy you've been paying? <laughs> you wasted a lot of money. You got to stop mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's not, you're not doing anything for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's so good. Oh, man. Oh, dude, this has been great. Uh, we're nearly coming up for an hour and a half here, Coach, <laughs> already. I run on a lot, man. I'm sorry. Shit. Nah, man, it's been great. Like I said, it's been great. I love the man. Our nine beats his five. So they said that's what Eric Lasseter says. Our nine beats their five. Well, yeah, man, he is he is high on that. And, you know, it was really when we first – when I first started coaching with him and it was in the travel, and he would – he he and this is travel ball. Understand, this these kids pay. It, we are like the top – tier team i mean there's some kids that like i don't know if you heard of holcomb brandon holcomb he's one of the he's one of the top prospects in in the 23 class and he plays at power and there's just a lot of kids that are committed to big time schools that play at power and these kids they do what we say man they are not like they don't tiptoe around they hey nine beats five man we are sprinting on sprinting off before their their five gets on you see some travel ball kids from other other programs walking, walking around they trot they're prima donnas they, <clears throat> no man our guys are on off and we are on them I mean, you're on that right fielder you get in this third base dugout before that guy gets on that field man. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny watching them but it, he does a great job and I, i'm really i'm really happy to be with him right now and uh in that organization like i said Brian Dempsey, Jesse Marlowe, and then Eric Lasseter. I mean, the, if you look them up, Power Baseball, <clears throat> you'll see, you know, where they are right now in in the in the mix of travel ball organizations and how successful they are. Not just in this state, in the country, and different in the different age groups, and and the type of kids that they had, and where they're going to school, and this and that and the other. It's amazing. And I, one of the things I was going to tell man, he's got to get a uh, some type on his website. You know, all the kids that they that have gone everywhere. So people can see like this, this is just, it's absolutely crazy. It really is. I mean, they're still getting commitments. It was commitments up through this week. Mm. So like I said, Columbus University, Mars Hill and, and other places where they were like, we're still, we still got more. We're going to get them all. We're going to get, that's their goal. We want to get them all. A play, we're going to get them somewhere. So it, they're, they're good people, real good people, man. So you talk. You talked about like uh like then that's what they kind of like they're all about. What would you say, you know, I know you're trying to you're help out your mentoring, but like look back on your teams and things like that that you were all about. What would you say that you like you hung your hat on? Uh work ethic, man. I wanted to outwork everybody. We 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 it was about competing on a daily basis. You know, it was competition, it was outworking people. Um you know, I had co- I would have Joe Chaco. I remember Joe Chaco going everywhere to scout scout teams coming back with scouting reports, so I could sit there and know where where they stood, where, how, how to pitch them. Um, it, our coaches were probably I I think our coaches were better than any other coaching staff at the time. I I I just knew we were going to win because we we had a better coaching staff and we worked harder than anybody. And when we didn't. I looked at what did we do wrong, not what they did wrong. You know, obviously you watch the game and it might have been one mistake, one error, uh, and, or or a pitch call, and then next thing you know the pitch and and it's it's not where it needed to be. So you, should I call that pitch? Well, if he locates it, then it's a good pitch. But if he doesn't locate, boom, it's 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 hit. Um, I'll hang my hat on you know competing on a daily basis and uh, work at outworking people, uh, you know, with our with our staff and with our players. How did you create the uh, competition like with, within uh, the program? Did you guys create a lot of competition within the program and just oh, try to develop the talent? <laughs> you could have had it anywhere, man. It could have been in the weight room. It could have been. <laughs> it could have been when you're you're in fall and you're grinding out with whether you're doing CrossFit before we found out CrossFit wasn't great for shoulders or something. Uh, <laughs> it could have. It could have been on the field when you're going 
uh, you're separating into a bunt game and, and having three teams round robin and, and losers are picking up gear uh, or, or, running, or doing uh, burpees and the other guys are counting them or, or it could have been, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, base runners against catchers, you know, with pitchers holds. Um, you name it, my coaches came up with it. We did it. And it always, it, like, like, you know, at the end when you have some type of series, a Navy a, a Lime series or a Green Gray or a Scarlet, you know, gold, when you have that series and you split teams up and there's that com- type of competition, but they're all a big family, but it's really like we're beating you, you know? Um, it was it was constant, and then and then you have that camaraderie type of thing. It's constant competition, but then you got to bring them all back together. And we would do something with the team, whether um, you know, go do some type of team building thing, you know, uh, climbing ropes, uh, doing some type of military thing, or whatever, uh, camping. You know, we I used to take seniors on a friggin' fishing trip a few years. Uh, you know, do things with seniors so they understood that and then have great talks with them, but. You know, you, you did competition and 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 er, tried to do something about competition on a daily basis. And like we've already been doing it here. It's, hey, catchers are blocking. You know, we're retrieving, getting ready to throw. And then we would do steals, steal breaks. Um, you know, you're, you're doing, you can do, uh, the like I said, the bunning situation. You can go offense against defense, but, you know, it's, it's fun when you're trying to do base running and you're trying to pick up steals and they're trying to hold you and you're, you're actually trying to steal a bag and the catcher's trying to throw you out. And when he does, he's all pumped and the catchers, you know, four or five catchers are all waiting their turn and they're all pumped. And, and the base runners are all pumped when they get it. The pitchers are, are pumped when they pick them or they, they get them thrown out. It's, it's, you have to create some type of competitiveness for you to be successful. And if you don't, it gets mundane. It gets boring. Ready to practice, Coach. I'm ready. Oh, <laughs> I'm ready. Even just the even just the, the the stolen base game. Like, let's go. Like, let's go. Pop up, pop up communication is 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 fun. You know, you. I mean, we take that machine and we throw it up where major leaguers don't hit it that high. And <laughs> and, and, and you know, it, it's just. And then the hitting, and then when we do the hitting drills, certain hitting drills, and some guys can do them, and some guys can't. We have some drills that we do that are sort of, uh, that are, I think you probably saw a fetch it maybe one time, you know, the dog tool with the tennis ball, and guys trying to go into the into the sock net, and they keep backing up till they get to a point, and then it's like they they're actually competing about how many times out of ten each one can put it in the sock net, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> small ball with a, um, you know, your your. Uh, your your iron rod and we're hitting the small 7.5 balls <laughs> and we're freaking drilling those you know just just flat bats uh um you know your one hand bats with weighted on it trying to go back net five times in a row and and seeing who can do it it just you can create competitiveness by by in doing so many aspects uh, of this game and when you do that and they want to compete against each other without you telling them you know you're on the right path yeah. Would you do? Would you like? How, how do you like uh, JV and varsity, or like varsity and varsity by themselves? Like no, it's has. funny because he he used to do separately. He, he he asked me about that, and then he's he's doing it this year for probably the first time. And I've told him what we got to do. You know, you you might not get as many reps, which it is what it is. But you you need them to to come through the same system that you're teaching these guys. So there's not something new when they jump up or you need to move the best guy up, you know, going through the same type of signs, going do running the same offense, running the same defense, uh, um, doing the same drills. And, you know, you might have, let's say you've got 38 guys, you know, you got 20, 20 on your varsity cause that's your roster max. And you got 18 there, or you got 20 and 16, whatever it is, 36, 38. But, you got to get everybody repped. So you're out there when you're doing fungos, man, you got, you got your two varsity guys, you got your one or two JV guys at every spot and you're, everyone's getting fungus. You got two fungo guys doing the infield and you got a, a machine or another uh, guy doing for the outfielders separately. You got your pitching coach over there with your arms 
getting their bullies in with their varsity uh, catchers and their JV catchers. Cause you got to, you know, you might have two pens, three pens going at the same time or alternating. And, and then they're all doing the same drills. You know, you have to have a decent enough staff or a large enough staff to be able to be able to do that, which, you know, five guys can really handle it. Four guys can handle it, but we have five guys handling it. And, you know, we're constantly, constantly out there with everybody. Now me in particular, I mean, I work, everybody with the base running has to do the same exact thing. It's my way. That's it. You know, that, uh-huh. I, I want you. And then we're running the bait when we do, and we still have things to work on. Cause you know, being, being new to his program, I told him we're going to, we're going to run. And, and we, cause in the summer we run so much, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and we're always safe. And, and here uh, I said, we can do the same thing. Cause we have the speed and, you know, we're, he gives, he gives me the leeway to tell these kids, you know, these are the counts we're going to go on, whether I tell you or not, we're going on these counts, unless I tell you to shut down, you know, if the guy slides shut down, if he's not sliding, he's lifting, we go automatically and dirt ball reads. We do dirt ball reads. That's another thing that we compete on. Um, but with hitting, everyone does the same drills, but I focus mainly on the varsity guys, you know, okay. and, and with the JV coach sees all the drills and sees what I'm doing and he'll focus on, um they're jv hitters um it's just there's there's not a lot of time where i can focus on you know all the hitters and and at the end of the day the guys that go into the playoffs and move on is the varsity guys so to be successful you really got to focus on that and have a big enough staff where people can oversee uh, you know the other guys as well Mm. how do you compete on the dirt ball reads like what are you doing there he said you said you compete with that (laughs) Oh yeah, man, those are awesome. It's, uh, <laughs> well, it, he he actually does something a little bit different than I did. I never would. I, he would put a screen up with actually uh, with a tarp over it, a, a huge base screen with a tarp over it, and and hide the pitching machine enough where you would only see the the, the coach with his arm up and start to put the the ball in, almost like a pitcher, you know, separating, coming up in the arm slot in the window, getting ready to go. And then you wouldn't see the ball enter the machine, but you'd have to visualize what we try to teach them is you're, you have got to don't, you, how many guys do you see look from pitcher to catcher? You're going to see a dirt ball be a dirt ball, probably two thirds of the way to the plate that you already know it's going to be down. Yes. And if you already know it's going to be down and you leave, you're nine times out of 10, if not 10 out of 10, you're going to be safe because you've already got three strides, four strides before. You might have three strikes before that ball hits the dirt. You're already out. You're gone. And you know what we what we're doing is, you know, one th- he moves the machine where it's not always a dirt ball. <laughs> mm-hmm. So if you're not reading it right and guys leave, they're out. You're if out. guys go ahead and and catch the dirt ball and don't go, you know, I mean they're they're out. You got to go and you got to go at the right time and you got to be able to get there. And the catchers would just sit there that are just working on blocking and retrieving and getting ready to release, but don't release. And he does that where the kids can't see. Now, I, I never used the screen or the tarp before, but um, there's going to be a time where we're going to have a, no screen, a guy at second base, and the guy catching can go ahead and either back pick or throw through. And okay. that's going to be really good competition because when you're doing base, when you're doing the reads, we have three sets of, of players, if not two sets, if we have two sets here, we have two sets at second. If we have three sets here then we have three lines and, and you're going to see three kids either. They should all do the same thing. Mm-hmm. They should all either go or come back. You know, they're going to go ahead, secondary, secondary and up, get back or secondary, secondary, take off. You know, and and so you're competing to be the first guy to leave or the first guy back or or am I going to get thrown out? You know, and, and eventually that's going to be really cool. And we can go ahead and get the catchers and hey, they go get them. If not, back pick them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're basically going to compete within that three groups that you're the, the three people that are going against you or. Yeah, depending on but, the line, but see, down the line, it'll be where you're going to have only one guy up because you're going to go ahead and look at this one guy, either going or not going and back picking or throwing them out. The other guys are there, but you're really getting that only that first guy. guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Picture that. And then you could do it with all three. 
you know, honestly, you can have all three bags loaded with kids and you can either back pick first, you can back pick third, you can back pick second base. If you block it and the guy at first takes off and the guy at second takes off, the guy in third probably won't because you blocked it. Hell, he can go ahead and throw to third or throw to second. I mean, you, you can have fun with the drill. Oh, for sure. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you always like do it off machine? Yeah, best way to, I mean, I, honestly for us, it, it keeps everything moving because you can't have a, a a pitcher. You don't want a pitcher to keep throwing dirt balls <laughs> and you don't want to, and a coach really can't simulate the speed of it and really help the catchers because the catchers have to get work out of it too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's for sure. And then you can do fastballs one day, you can do curveballs another day. I mean, you, you left from left or right, get different spins. Oh, yeah. No, it's great. I just was wondering, like, yeah, just, I guess, splitting the teams up and things like that, how you do it, you know, that would be the competition of it. But, yeah, it's super good. Base running is – I I love – I think that's one way the, the game has really grown as well. I don't know about you, how you say, like, but I think the base running has really – people just know it's more about – you better be focusing on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, our first year – my first year up at Phillips, we sold 95 bags, mm -hmm. 95 in a season. And, and, you know, when we had COVID hit, I don't think we were going to get 95. We we're probably going to get like 75 and that's still a lot, but for me, it wasn't enough. And then last year, um, I think we were in, we were probably in the upper, I'd like to say upper eighties. And if we would have won that, that regional game, we definitely had a shot at, at getting where we were that first year. Cause I, I mean, I, we run, it's high school baseball. How many catchers are going to be? throwing out people every single time. It just, that's just not how it works at this level. Are you going to run into some real good arms? Yeah. But for the most part, the catchers aren't going to be throwing down on a regular basis, 2-0 or below. I mean, all you got to do is add it up and, and know who your personnel is on the bag. If I'm adding up to a 3-5 or 3-6, man, we are stealing a lot of bases that day. You know, yeah. real simple. The side of the plate, hell, if he's, if he's a 1-3, one, 1-4, one, they're done. We're, we're running. This guy's got to be a sub one, two for, uh, for us not to go. And then what we have to do is go see what the catcher is. And then we got to figure out, can we really run? Who are we running on? Are we running on the catcher day? Are we running on the pitcher? Or it doesn't matter because both of them aren't very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really pretty simple when you put the numbers yes, together. What we got to do is get out there and, and have a guy go on movement and say, okay, what do you, you know, I had, there was guys over the summer that <laughs> they get down there. I'm like, Hey, look, he's, he's about a three, it's three, four total. We can sort of move. He goes, coach, that's okay. I'm a three, three. Winks like that dude's hilarious. <laughs> so. That's good. That's yeah. what you know. It's great. And then like, the kids are getting it. They're grasping it. You know, I think just all that, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see, the, you know, what they're learning come together like that. Yeah, they believe if they can trust in you and believe, like I we had a we have a guy, um, Jack Waddingham, and and he's not the fastest dude, okay? Really good form, but he hasn't grown into it. Like he's a really tall, lanky kid, really nice physique, left handed hitting, uh, right hand throwing third baseman. Can also play the outfield. He's just a very good ball player. And uh only tenth grader. And um and a big kid. And it's funny, I go, Jack, I'm going to have you stealing bases. I want you to know that. He goes, okay, coach. So I would tell him when to go, and he's really worked on dirt ball reads. And this kid hasn't gotten thrown out yet. And it's hilarious because there's faster kids that if they don't do it right, they get thrown out. And this guy is going, he just looks back at me, and we smile at each other. I'm looking at last, <laughs> and we're looking at each other. I'm like, Tony, we're going to have this guy stealing. He's going to steal 15, 20 bags this year. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I don't care. You know, you could be a six, seven guy and not be good on the bags. You know, you oh, can be a seven right. and be really good on the bags. You know, you just got to know what you're supposed to do and what you're looking for. You see a catcher go down to his knees, dude, you're gone. <laughs> you're gone. As soon as you see a guy go down the block or he's on his knees already, look, we are going. As <laughs> simple as that. If they want to be that stupid, we're running. <laughs> It. Well, Coach, I, I, I'm I, man. Is, we've been over an hour and a half now. I just want to respect your time. I'm just thinking about before we roll, like in, like wrapping things up. Is there something 
you want to leave somebody with advice, you know, whatever your heart's on. Uh, it's just as we wrap things up here. You know, you have to have, um, you have to adapt to things and you have to really, really love doing what you're doing. And, and if there's a time where you're second guessing yourself and you're not really enjoying it, then it's probably showing to, you know, the other kids as well. You have to enjoy what you do. You have to have um, that all in or all out mentality. And that's another thing Eric has on, on the dugout, all in, all out. Um, you got to be all into what you do to be successful. And you got to have people surround yourself with really good people that believe in what you're doing and, and don't be scared to listen to them as well. You know, to make sure that you can lean on some people have hopefully, um, you know, if you surround yourself with good people and you're a good person, usually good things will happen. So um, just, you, you got to work hard, hard at your craft to be, to be able to be successful. And every time you work hard at it, it doesn't mean you're going to be successful, but don't start working hard and have, have that commitment, have that drive and have that passion for what you do. And hopefully you will be successful. Well said. I appreciate that coach. It was great. Um, if anybody wanted to reach out to you, talk to more baseball, what's the best way to get in contact with you? Oh, um, Evans R 21 at comcast.net. That's my email. Uh, you can give my number 954-854-7855. Phone number, email is fine. Um, you know, hell, they should be, if they're, they're a high school baseball coach, they should be going to conventions, national conventions, state conventions, trying to take everything they can from other people that have been doing it a long time, maybe been successful. Um, you know, you steal from others to try to implement into your pro be better. Um, going to the ABCA, you know, the baseball convention for the colleges that, that you go to something like that and you listen, you learn and you take from it and, and hopefully you implement and, and you can use. Coach Ray Evans, just get some great information. Stuff that I really enjoy. Just love the conversation. Just love talking good baseball. Just love talking lessons and just everywhere this thing we got into specific details of a base running drill to overall talking about helping kids in life, helping kids beyond the. I loved how he mentioned about it's not just this is not the best thing in life. It's just one of the best things. There's no way this should be the best thing in their life. It's you're creating that environment to, yes, create a great experience, but understanding that this is just a small piece and we're, we're trying to help him out. And he, as a Hall of Famer he is, and the great coach he is, you hear it's not about him. It's about the people around him. He talked about the continuity of a staff, having a great staff, having a great situation to be successful. You know, and I think even people don't even realize, like, maybe they're not in a great situation. And it's okay. Like, look, you can be a good coach and be fine with where you're at. And just knowing that you're just not in a great situation. Just having maybe peace, knowing that there's just obstacles maybe in your way that you're not able to win like other other places just because of your situation and things like that. But you can still have the peace knowing that you are a good coach and you have other purposes and your success is just defined differently than wins and losses. So I think it's very important and important to understand um, those situations, you know, and that's what Coach Evans was, was talking about is, is how these different situations arise and they rose at different times and what he was looking for and what he needed to be successful in terms of, you know, winning and, and, and just seeing if he could be that winner and, and have a powerhouse that he ended up having. Um, so it was a really great conversation. I really enjoyed it. Uh, even loved how he's trying to marry it, it, the travel ball and, and high school and, and trying to fight the good fight of the bridging the gap between travel baseball and high school, which is, this is important, um, cause it is here. And like coach Evan says, we need to adapt to the times and cause it, it, there's other things that they're just not going away. And both high school, both travel baseball, they both serve purposes. And and it's Coach Evans is about the player. And if we are about the player, then we're going to work together to give them the best experience that we can, which ultimately helps the player. So 
Loved that conversation with him. Really enjoyed it. All the things that he got into about raising a, creating a program. And I can't thank you enough. Here we are, Aaron, 34 minutes in. As we still could closing out this 90th episode of the podcast, which, again, getting sponsored by Netting Pros and talking to a guy like Ray Evans. You know, it's, it's great to sit back and, and just be very thankful for the conversations that we're having and the things that we're learning because this has helped me, you know, and it's helping me in the journey, and I'm just hoping that we can share it, help others, understand their situation, grow from their situation, and keep growing the game. So uh, feel free to reach out, TreyTCobb at gmail.com, Coach3Cobb, um, BMBB podcast, follow us on Twitter, uh, or if you're on Facebook, there is a we have Facebook page as well. So hope through a couple weeks, seeing everybody in, at the ABCA. And again, big congratulations out to Coach Evans for being one of the new members of the Hall of Fame class of the National High School Baseball Coach Association. Coach Evans, thanks again for your time. Everyone else, thanks for sticking with us. Until next week, keep getting better.